This podcast is sponsored by Terraform Development is an engineering and architectural design studio company located in Flagstaff, Arizona. Co-owner and founder Eddie Kalnimtua supports the Hopi way of life and supports the next generation, including hiring Hopi professionals, individuals like Dr. Brianne Laban from the village of Tewa. Contact Terraform at 928-864-5022, extension 1, or you can email them at info at T-E-R-R-A, the number 4 dot com, or visit their website at www.terra, the number 4 dot com to learn more about Terraform development. They can design your next home, manage your next construction project, or fly their latest drone equipment to get aerial views of your project. Also sponsored by Strong Ones. Strong Ones is dedicated to exposing cultural traditions of running that exist within many cultures and tribes worldwide through running apparel. Strong Ones is an individually owned business supporting cultural running traditions and supporting local organizations within the Hopi Reservation. They can be found at strongones.myshopify.com. Again, that's strongones.myshopify.com. They are also on Facebook at Strong Ones 15. Yeah. Good morning, Hopi Land. Thank you for listening to Carl and J-Man Save the World podcast. My name is Carl, and this is my best friend, J-Man. What up? What up? Well, you know, it's been a great journey here, and I think we are... You it's know, been a great season. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's been a great season, and we are heading, you know, we are getting closer and closer to the uh, end of season two here. So, you know, I'm very excited of what, what's to come today, especially because we do have some special surprises for you guys. So, special surprises? Yeah, special surprises. It's, That's a surprise to me, too. You know, it's because of uh, I probably will be singing uh, oh, most God. of this episode here, and I'll probably, uh, you know, uh, making sure that I uh, flaunt my love to all of the corn ladies out there. And he'll and also continue <laughs> to find ways to uh, piss people off to come after us. <laughs> Everybody loves... So, Courtney, I, I hope you're not listening today. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to stay away from my sister, Courtney, and, you know, not throw her under the bus too many times in this episode. But, you know, sometimes... You know, I, I feel like throwing somebody in under the bus every now and then. So, <laughs> so this, uh, you know, episode, uh, episode eight. Yeah. Epis- episode eight. Episode so, eight. Um, today's episode, I think, was kind of uh, an almost, almost like an accidental type of thing. Because I, when we started the season, that we were had a format laid out, everything was uh, scheduled, but then uh, kind of a happy accident happened. Oh, yeah. It turns out that we're not the only uh, Hopis out there that are podcasting. I know, right? I thought we were the only ones. And, and it turns out there's somebody else. There's somebody else. I and so like. that somebody else is our special guest today. And yeah. we'll bring him on and he'll talk a little bit about, you know, his podcast, his experiences, podcasting, why he podcasts and, you know, kind of some of the ties that he has to our communities out here. And so, you know, um, I, I think for me, I really did get excited when I did find out that there were other Hopi podcasters out there. But I... To my knowledge, I'm still pretty sure that we're the only podcast from the reservation. Oh, yeah. We still actually do podcasting here on the reservation. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. But then I heard that there's this uh, dumb cat out there that <laughs> has his own podcast, too. But you know, I, I think he's Wallapai or something because uh, yeah, he's got a, a Wallapai last night. Larry time. Wadahamaji has his own podcast. So if you haven't listened to Larry Wadahamaji, go find him. Are you related to that guy? Because uh, you, you sound real. Like I have him. no idea who that guy is, but I think he's a cool guy. So I heard he's an ass. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so so today's topic is going to be a uh, Hopi podcast. Oh yeah, talking Hopi about po- podcasting, talking about our podcast, talking about our special guest podcast, and uh, and. 
one thing that I think is a uh, uh, pretty apparent is that podcasts are actually fairly new to the reservation. Oh right? yeah, or at least the idea of uh, what a podcast is is new to the reservation. And I say that because um, for the responses that we've gotten for this podcast, that a lot of folks uh, do mention that you know I never knew what a podcast was. Yeah, until I listened to you guys. Yeah, and, and it, it, it's kind of strange when you do talk uh, to them about like yeah, listen to our podcast, and they're like what. What in the Sam Hill is a <laughs> podcast? What's a podcast? What in uh, you know, what in <laughs> Kevin Cosner's bitches is the podcast here? <laughs> what radio station is that on? <laughs> And so, you know, I think that that's uh, fairly, um, I, I guess, expected because then, you know, at least in terms of us res folk and even, you know, reminiscing back to when you were a kid growing up here on the reservation, that really the only thing that you listened to was music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so we talked about uh, the types of music that we like in our res music episode. And then I think that when you do get older, that you kind of gravitate away from music and listen to certain radio stations. And that kind of becomes the, um, at least the entertainment that you uh, subscribe to in regards to what it is and to the audio side. Yeah. And you know, it, it's kind of strange because uh, I, I, I believe that only older generations kind of listen to the radio. And then, you know, our generation kind of listens to music and partially of radio and re really no, don't listen to anything of podcasting like mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But there is a young person out there that actually listens to us. Uh, you know, he's a, a young boy. His name is uh, Suima. So big shout out yeah, to Suima, so big our, shout our out, biggest fan. Our biggest fan, Suima. You know, uh, shout out to you. You're probably the only kid that actually <laughs> listens to us. Kid, don't listen to us, okay? <laughs> We, we give bad advice. <laughs> but I, I guess in what you're saying that, you know, a lot of us uh, kind of partially radio and partially to music. And really, that is a reservation thing, because then, you know, I think our urban relatives or urban counterparts, they have more exposure to podcasts. Yeah. I have friends that are about at, in the age range of myself and, you know, they, they, they're deep into podcasts. Yeah listening to all types of different podcasts and you know they have their favorites and so you know when we tell them about our podcast they're like oh they they know exactly where to go where to find us i think we i think we hooked everybody here on the reservation to a, to our podcast uh-huh uh -huh. yeah i think it's because they love my voice they love my singing voice of course that's one thing so all you ladies out there who love my singing voice i'm here so this paid sponsorship was paid for by Justin Villarreal. Nurturing Indigenous Intelligence is a grassroots organization whose mission is to assist our Indigenous students and in their pursuit of education. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up with upcoming distributions. <laughs> well, we all have to be good at least one thing in our lives. So. <laughs> And so, you know, really what, what the basis of what a podcast is, and, you know, this is something that I'm learning even myself because I, I barely started listening to podcasts myself. Yeah. Probably within the last two years is when I really got onto the podcast uh, wagon and kind of just discovered that, you know, there's probably a podcast out there for anything and everything. Oh, yeah. Any, yeah. any uh, possible interests that you may have, that there's probably a podcast out there about it. And so, you know, but just depending upon, you know, what your interests are. I know for myself that, you know, a lot of you know that, you know, big sports fan, a uh, big professional wrestling fan. And so those are some of the podcasts that I got into um, early and then learning about, you know, where to find podcasts and to, uh, I guess, discover the uh, diversity of the different types of podcasting out there. You know, it amazes me. Yeah. About what type of subjects that you can find. I think we, we become the pioneers of people who want to start a podcast, but don't know how to start a podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it is, it's fairly easy. All you need is your, your, a simple mic, a computer, or you can just use your phone as pretty much. And it, 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 it it's, it's pretty simple to start a podcast. You, you just need to pick a subject and go with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, speaking, well, I guess moving on into the conversation, um, how did our podcast start? Oh, man, it was, I think we were, it we was, just said, hey, let's start a podcast. And we're like, oh, okay, let's go. It was a hot spring day. <laughs> we it were was, playing video games. We were playing video games. And they said, hey, you know what? We should start a podcast. Said, What's a podcast? What's a podcast? <laughs> like, I don't know. I heard it on the radio. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so I think really the story behind our podcast is that, you know, because like we've mentioned before on our podcast is that, you know, we've been friends for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, we've had, you know, like just like any other friends when you uh, see your buddies and, you know, you kind of have, you know, numerous things in common. You start this uh, deep conversation about different topics. And so a lot of the topics that you and I would converse about really is a lot of the stuff that we've talked about on this podcast yeah a lot yeah. of things related to hopi culture a lot of different things related to the reservation lifestyle um a lot of uh, other things in regards to like our educational experiences our experiences living life in the city but i think that the funny thing that you know it, it took a while for us i think to really be on the same page <laughs> in regards to what it is that we wanted to talk about because in those very uh, beginning days of us uh, starting this podcast you wanted to talk about something completely different and then I wanted to talk about something completely different. Yeah, it's like it, we had two polar opposites of, of each other. You know, you are you come from like the jock side of that and I come from like Quidditch. I come from the cool side. And, and then I come from like Quidditch matches and, uh, you know, uh, slaying dragons in my in my dreams. Flying around Solo's house <laughs> with your broomstick. <laughs> She's like, son, get off my broomstick. Wearing quas pants Wearing to quas impress pants. the girls. <laughs> Shut up, Gua. Trying to impress girls, okay? <laughs> and then, you know, but I, I think that, you know, the one uh, commonality that we really did have what were those experiences um, living this res lifestyle um, and then having that real, um, I guess that, I guess the knowledge base yeah. that our grandparents, our parents gave us in, into the lifestyles of Hopi, the cultures of Hopi, and, and the religions of Hopi. Yeah. And so that's kind of really where we... Um, I guess that was kind of our starting point. And then, you know, we got a great response from 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 those topics, from the listeners. You know, it, it's just talking about like our past and our experiences of, of the outside world and how we see like the Bahana or like how we see the mainstream society and what we what we've done uh, in order to like keep our traditions alive versus like mm -hmm, living mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. uh, Bahana world. So... And I guess that's what people really liked is that, you know, they relate to it so much is that, yeah, I've been going through the similar situation and it's like, it's exciting to hear other people's stories when, when you do, when you are out on in the community and say that, Hey, I like that episode, you know, but you know, here's my, you know, here's my experience. This is what I think about that. And then I'm like, yeah, I know I'm famous. You want me to sign something? <laughs> <laughs> well, that you know, I, I think what you just said there is a really good point. And what, one of the big positive things about podcasts are because then, you know, like you said, uh, or like we were saying in regards to podcasting, is that you can find a topic that interests you, or at least you have some sort of experience with. Yeah. And then I think the fact that, you know, us being native people, yeah. is the fact that makes us a minority in America. But then even going down the further and being Hopi people makes us a minority within this pool of native people. And so oftentimes when you're out and you catch something in regards to native culture, in regards to indigenous culture, that a lot of those conversations that you hear outside of Hopi don't really relate to Hopi. Yeah. Or sometimes they don't really relate to even reservation lifestyles. Because for um, for example, um, I, I was listening to a, a podcast recently kind of about uh, topics on indigenous people. Yeah. And so the guest had kind of made a lot of remarks um, in regards to his experiences and then you know kind of what his perspectives were on something like uh, gender roles gender yeah. roles within ceremony and you know he kind of had what he had to say but what he had to say I felt like wasn't really plausible for Hopis and the comments that you and I have always made in regards to American Indians is that you know we fall into this dangerous uh, conversation habits to where we kind of generalize everybody yeah, and we throw everybody yeah. into the same pot, and you know, I think that when we do that, that it you kind of take away the uniqueness of each individual tribe, and um, at least in regards to all of the tribes in the United States, one glove does not fit all. No, and no. for for example, you know, our our past uh, previous uh, episodes late uh, in the season, uh, Hopi and Navajo relations, that there are definitely different perspectives from both tribes, and so I think for me, at least when we started this podcast. One of the conversations that I really wanted to start 
was that you know the reservation does have a different perspective. Uh-huh. Yeah, that Hopis do have a different perspective. That's different from the general American Indian narrative, or that's different from the general indigenous narrative that you might hear on other native podcasts or that you might hear in American Indian studies classrooms, because um, even with our natives in urban, uh, our native res native and urban native episode that we are learning that urban natives are becoming the larger population. Oh yeah. And so their perspective is kind of being the one that shared more because there are more of them than there are of the reservation natives. And so that's really what I wanted to do with this podcast was to really give the reservation a voice. Oh yeah. And you know, it is, it is strange that you were talking about like how different generations have their own perspective views. And it is, it is true that in the Hopi, in the Hopi setting here, that generations older than us or younger than us have different views mm-hmm, of mm-hmm, mm-hmm. other native tribes. And it's weird when you when you think about it is because aren't we supposed to be like all friendly with each other and all, all you know, <laughs> happy go lucky Hopi cookies. Let's have Hopi cookies at night, you know, but no, it's not. It's like. I have a different viewpoint of this Navajo here or this uh, Ute or this, you know, Mexican or, you know, all these different tribes out there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's like, are we trying to, uh, you know, and it's strange to, to think that we're trying to be happy with each other. But in generations past and future generations, I don't think it's going to uh, change much. <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to have hoopy cookies at dinner every single day. <laughs> That's that's basically what uh you know that's our that's our perspective views like yeah we have Hopi cookies every now and then so <laughs> no but I I think that at least you know at least in regards to what you're saying and I think that's another reason why you know I kind of push for some of the topics that we talk about yeah you know, kind of the more controversial stuff because then you know as much as we try to paint happy faces on everybody the reality is is that there are tensions oh yeah with each other. That we are upset with each other for some reason or another. And so, you know, how are we supposed to get over those tensions? How yeah. are we supposed to resolve our problems if we don't talk about it? Oh, yeah, exactly. And, you know, it, it, it is strange that we we don't talk about these different situations and we don't we don't. N- you know, necessarily like uh, want to talk about it. I think we just kind of avoid that topic of talking about certain things like this. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I, it's because it, you know there are there are people out there that just don't want to air their dirty laundry out there and say that okay, here's everything that I that I view. So, and I think that's what makes our podcast unique. Yeah, exactly. And so <laughs> we put our necks out there, you know, for <laughs> for people to shoot at in case that you know we say say certain things that you know might be a little offensive to folks and you know to all our urban native relatives out there, you know, yes, your shoes are clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, speaking of um, clean shoes and speaking of urban natives, I think it's best that we bring in our uh, our guest here. Yes. All right. So uh, he is, um, he, his name is Jose Acevedo, and he's from uh, the village of Sipaulavi, and he uh, owns a podcast called Finding Arizona Podcast. So please welcome uh, Jose. Welcome to the show, Jose. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I just want to say I'm here to defend all the clean shoes relatives <laughs> right now. So, so are <laughs> They're you clean because we want to keep them clean? No, <laughs> no, 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 no comment from us on that. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so when you ride a bike, does uh, does your uh, do you feel smooth on the on the pavement? Not like rough where you have to go on the sand. Yeah, just just completely, just a straight shot, no bumps, <laughs> no no getting stickers on my my tires, nothing. Damn, lucky. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Jose, we're really happy to have you here, and we're happy that you found us and that you're willing to share uh, your your story and how you developed your podcast, what your podcast is about. Um, and then, you know, we had this conversation prior to our recordings, and Carl and I have mentioned this too before that uh, even though we live on the res, we were born and raised on the reservation, that we don't sound like res guys. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. And then with you, Jose, you actually did live out here on the reservation. So uh, if you can tell us uh, some of your experiences here out on Hopi. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so I grew up, well, okay, so 
let's start from the beginning. Wow, this is going to be hard. Uh, I wasn't there all my life. So my parents met in the military. Uh, I was born in Phoenix. Then my parents uh, moved to, uh, they moved to the eastern part of Pennsylvania, a little town called Allentown. And then when I got up to, I think, 12 or 13, my mom knew that I wanted to go to college, but she couldn't afford it. So she always felt it was good for us to also learn our you know, heritage and who we are. So she packed up and we all moved to uh, Solo's house for a little bit. And then we ended up uh, in our own little house. And then I was going to uh, Hopi High from all throughout high school. And then I graduated in 2007. And that's when I went to ASU, go Sun Devils. Ooh, and that's, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I I stayed. I basically, you know, got my education. I um, was, you know, when I was in grad school is when I started finding out about podcasts and getting interested in um, doing that. And when I was in grad school, I was working for a screen printing business. And that's where I got into talking with the, you know, people who were buying shirts and had businesses and business owners and they were all interesting fellows and they all were very open about what they do and how they do their things. And so it was then when I got a couple of compliments of, from guys that were like, Hey, you're really good at like, you know, talking to people. It's like, you should really think about doing something and, you know, either radio or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I didn't, I went to school for landscape architecture and that, <laughs> that wasn't my, that wasn't my interest. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, thanks guys. I really appreciate it. And that's when I got into podcasting. I started hearing, you know, these random TV, like, like you, you were, uh, I, I don't know if it was J man or Carl is interested in wrestling. So am I, I oh, cool. I'm a big wrestling. I'm a big wrestling. I actually went to, um, I went <laughs> to, Oh gosh, I went to SummerSlam when the rock came back and when his music popped, everyone popped, like literally everyone just got out of their seats. It was crazy. It was fantastic times. I love wrestling, and that's what got me into podcasting, as well as other nerdum like movies, TVs, everything <laughs> under the sun. Because I didn't, I didn't have time to like go out and go to the movies. I had time to work at my desk and listen to people talk about movies or talk about things that they're interested in. So that's what got me into it. And I was like, I could do this. I could, I could be these guys. I could you know, do something like this. And that's when someone, it came across to me that a lot of these guys needed help with their businesses. And that's where I got my opportunity of like, Hey, how about I record with you and we'll talk about your business. And they're like, okay. And that's kind of the snowball effect is everyone was on board for this experimental idea of me talking to them. And once it was all said and done, they really enjoyed it. And they like the final product. So, you know, one thing led to another. It's now taken over my life for a lot of time and effort. My wife's involved now. Um, so, yeah, I, I just enjoy what I do for sure. So but, that's awesome, Jose. And it sounds like your story is fairly similar to Carl's that uh, you didn't go to school for podcasting, that you uh, did a completely different route because uh, Carl went to school to uh, fix refrigerators. <laughs> and, and now here, here's uh, it's a It's not a refrigerator school. <laughs> to, to put it out there, it's not a refrigerator school. I have a bachelor's degree. <laughs> I, have a, I, have a, I have a bachelor's degree in graphic design, okay? <laughs> I, um, I didn't know vocational schools gave out a bachelor's degree. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going to take that from him? You got to stand up. Tell him how important that DeVry University was to you. DeVry. My, my college went yes. bankrupt, basically. So we had a, we had a, we had a Quidditch team. So, so I don't know if you really have a bachelor's degree now, Carl. I, I'd look into that. I don't so. think bachelor's is spelled with two, two U's in it. <laughs> The Indigi Design Collab are indigenous designers collaborating to bring creative people and ideas closer together through education, communication, and creative expression. They explore, cultivate, and indigenize space. Indigi Design Collab is having a call for entry starting September 1st for digital artwork for their second annual design show. The theme is Rise to Vote. For more information, they can be found on Facebook or Instagram. 
So you said that you graduated from Hopi High, right? Yeah. And you graduated in 2007 from there? Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. That's, you're fairly young then. Yeah. I just actually, <laughs> this is going to be funny. I turned 31 uh, two days ago. Really? Oh, no kidding. Dang. Yeah. Ha- happy yeah, belated so birthday. I, yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And so, then I'm expecting my first son next year. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Oh, wow. So, well, Congratulations. yeah. Get ready very for, <laughs> get ready for uh, an all night or so. And you you've surpassed yeah. surpassed Carl in, in in that area. We're yeah. still trying to find him a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry, he'll find one. She yeah. just is out there waiting for him somewhere. If she, if she likes if she likes city fair. if she likes Quidditch Quidditch matches, I'm okay with that. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 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 Jose. Um. So so growing up, uh, growing up, being born and I guess raised in the urban areas, and and then I guess you know having parents in the military. What were some, uh, I guess, some astounding changes that you experienced, or at least some of the first things that you witnessed when you first came to the reservation for the first time? Oh yeah. Was, um, <laughs> so I'm Puerto Rican on my dad's side, and my dad is six foot four. So when I hit uh, my growth spurt, I was at six foot and being that most of the guys were five foot four out there, I stood out, I stood, I stood out, I stood out like a, you know, I'm a tall guy. And so, <laughs> so yeah, so the stereotypes the, are most, true. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it's just, it was what it was. I wasn't too, you know, everything was new as far as culture, as far as the way we talk, as far as my education, it was all brand new to me. And so, you know, I was a teenager, I was a preteen and I was at a rebellious stage in my life. So there were some moments where I fought back and kind of was going against the grain a little bit and my parents didn't enjoy it. But, you know, I, I grew up a lot out there and I grew up uh, by, you know, taking in my surroundings, understanding that, you know, culture out there is different. And I took that upon myself you know, to understand that much. And I joined the cross country team and I, you know, put myself in, um, cultural, you know, things that I didn't know that I could be a part of, or I didn't understand a lot. And so it was, I think my curiosity, as far as the person that I am is always asking questions as to why, or as to, that's what makes me a good podcaster is my ability to ask those questions and being able to not be afraid to ask those questions is something that I think really helped me um, understand where I was going in life and where I wanted to go in life. And so that helped me really approach, you know, doing dances and doing, um, you know, cultural things out there. And it was, it was hard, of course, because, you know, I'm, different i stand out i don't look like everyone else but i had my brother and most people know my brother uh, sam and so you know he was always there to defend me he was always there to back me up and there was other people there was a lot of guys on the team or you know other quads and 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 people out there that were just kind of behind me and backing me up and so i had a very different approach to seeing things and doing things, but I always approached it with sensitivity and I've always approached it with an open heart. So well, that's how I live my life. That's, that's great. That's yeah, great. that's great because, you know, you have you have your brother to back you up. I have my sister that she's probably going to kill me one of these days. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hear every episode, I, I you know, I'm a fan guy, so I'm listening. And every episode, I'm just wondering when she's going to call in, <laughs> when she's going to pull, she's going to curse you out in front of everyone on this show i'm just waiting for that episode that's gonna be fun for me to listen funny i I think courtney's as famous (laughs) as we are Exactly. And uh funny funny story is like after I threw her under the bus multiple times, uh she was she was trying to call me and I was like, Oh my god, I should I answer this phone call? I was like, I better just hide my phone is uh, change my number. Put, put it on silent. <laughs> put it on silent. And and so so that thank you, uh Jose, for sharing uh, your experiences out here. And I can imagine that, you know, it must have been difficult to adjust to a different type of culture, um adjust adjust to a different type of landscape. So I can imagine you being uh six foot that you're probably banging your head a lot in a lot of the doorways into a lot of the (laughs) homes and the uh, beams and a lot of the houses 
a lot of a lot of times having to duck my head and it's okay I, I i got used to it it was the first couple of hits that hit me in the head that i had to learn okay duck <laughs> and we've we've documented on this podcast a lot of how mean we are to each other oh, sometimes yeah. so I, I imagine that you probably experienced some of that um when you first uh came here to the reservation and so you know i uh, a lot of the guys were probably telling you inappropriate things like go tell that girl you want to touch her uh her private part <laughs> <Hopi>. <laughs> i was i was very uh, i'll tell you this i was i was very uh gullible to a lot of things and i was just it was it was different you know you just try and Make sure you smile and stay out of people's way. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you know uh, some words in the Hopi language? I know a little bit. You know, I don't know bad words. I know like <laughs> kids' words, like uh, "sikwi" and "kui" and just you know little things. Because uh, Carl and I, you know, we, we're, we're fairly um, at least knowledgeable about our language, but, you know, because we both uh, grew up near the Navajos. And so, you know, some of the Navajo words, you know, we learned were uh, uh, chaunt and uh, <laughs> some of the bad words. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what, though, I just was, you know, wanting to, I, I learned because my grandparents were so, so sweet and so patient with me that they you know gave me little words to learn and so did my mom it just was again when we were constantly uh when i left high school i went into going into design school and so it's like we didn't have that education that most people had where you're with your friends all the time and you know the words and you kind of pick it up or it's just secondhand nature my brother and i didn't have that so my brother picked it up a lot faster than I did because he was in the eighth grade and he kind of had friends that were helping him. I was just kind of left on my own, which is fine. I'm, I'm cool with that. But I, you know, I right now wish that I knew more words and more of my language because I have a son that's coming mm -hmm. that I really, really, really wish I knew more so that I could give that to him. That you, you know, that, that kind of feeling like I just really want him to learn more than me. So I'm trying to learn more. I really am. Well, that's good. Well, we'll definitely let you know, yeah. Jose, when somebody does get on top of uh, creating some sort of language immersion program, and we'll, we'll connect you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> you guys can do it. I'm listening to you guys, so I'm just picking up all the bad words from you guys. Yeah, just listen to us. We, we give you all the bad words first, and then we'll teach you and laugh at you later, so. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make fun of my accent. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a proven uh, method. To, oh yeah, to learning language, you learn the yep. bad words first, and then uh, <laughs> yep, develop by and reservation. Then will you fall into place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so Jose, uh, if you can tell us um, about your podcast, the podcast that you developed, sure. and then um, I guess uh, wh what it is that you talk about and how it is that you got into talking about a lot of those topics that you do. Yeah. So my podcast is called Finding Arizona Podcast. I started it in 2015. We are going again on our fifth year. So going, it'll be our fifth year. And it's been... 200 episodes 200 plus episodes of just guests who come in from different walks of life different businesses different opportunities that are either given to them or they've taken themselves and we just kind of hone in on what makes them tick and really it all started like you heard from my story it all started from grad school meeting these business owners and them being gracious enough to be like yeah i'll take a chance on you i'll let you tell my story we'll talk and it's really incredible what they're able to tell you and what they're able to give you once you sit down and you're just patient with them because like everything else that we've learned from our you know uh grandparents all of our, all the elders in front of us if you just sit and listen you will gain the knowledge that you need. And so that's the one thing that I can tell people that I've learned specifically from podcasting is just be patient. You'll get there. You'll learn or you'll um, experience something and you'll gain the experience. So you just have to be patient with yourself. And our podcast really goes into um, a lot of Valley business owners, Phoenix business owners. Um, but we do try our best to, you know, break out of just being in this area. So I've done 
uh, some episodes in Tucson and Flagstaff. We try and break out as much as we can. And I've really, really tried my best to reach out to Hopi artists. Um, we've had uh, Dwayne, for those of you who know him. And then we've for Navajos, we've had um, Jared Yazi, who's the owner of OXDX, which is a clothing line. Um, so, yeah, we try our best to really run the gamut as far as business owners and different peoples of uh, different backgrounds. Um, we have had LGBTQ people in. We've had nonprofits come in for Alzheimer's, for ALS. You know, we try everything that we can to make sure that people get a variety of stories. And so really what I'm there to do is just give people a open heart to listen to, because that's really what I'm there for is I'm genuinely interested in the businesses that every single one who's come on our show, I am fully on board of like either participating with them or um, wanting to buy something off of them. These are the people that I find fully fascinating and don't, they don't get recognized as much. And so that's kind of why I do what I do is it's important to me to hear every story and give opportunity out there to everyone because I've witnessed people, even from our own reservation, they don't get opportunities all the time. And I feel like that's unfair. Everyone gets a chance, should get a chance to tell their story. And so that's kind of what our podcast does. It gives them that one hour to express themselves and just really lay it all out there. Wow. Wow. That, that is really, really cool. I, I think, you know, cause I, I, when, when J man mentioned uh, your podcast, I immediately went to that and started listening to some of your episodes. And I tell you, I, I just put that thing on play and I, I was, I was hooked on it of the different stories that uh, people were, were talking about, you know, like the, um, yeah. like the latest episode that you did was with the, uh, the guy who runs like a dating app or something. Carl has a profile yeah, set up already. <laughs> <laughs> already, have, already, already downloaded the app, so uh, you know <laughs> he's been yeah, swiping right I mean, like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's really great because we, you know, it really started out just being small business owners and really guys who are either trying to get T-shirts made so that they can go to the event that helps them get more customers or go to a, a national convention. These are things that they need printed out. And so they were either on the cusp of something happening or they're about to break through and needed these shirts to be printed so that they could have merch to sell or things like that. That's what was great about our podcast in the beginning was that we had enthusiastic people who were like really on the break of making something happen. And you could hear the excitement and not to say that they don't do it now, but I feel like right now where we're at is we snowballed into doing bigger markets and bigger, bigger players. And they've already been through the kind of hardship of failing or hardship of just making it. And so they're kind of at a different, you know, opportunity in their life. What I'm really, really excited about is I am always trying to figure out new things for the podcast. And so what I'm excited about for the future is, uh, one thing that you guys talk about is technology and what the opportunity gives for um, op technology to have on people's lives. And so you guys use your technology to broadcast and so do I, but I'm now looking at a new opportunity to try and do live streaming and do a live actual show that people can see um, either on Facebook or on YouTube or on um, another streaming platform called uh, Twitch. These things are important because they give us opportunity to share unique stories with the technology that we have. And I'm just really stoked about things that are happening behind the scenes. And the podcast will always be there for people to listen to. But there are new things that we got to keep pushing for and keep striving to do better. And this is the next step in that. And so for me, I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm excited for guys like you who are just doing new things and getting started because it gives me a chance to express not only what knowledge I have, but it gives me a chance to tell you guys, keep going because there's a lot there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cool things there. Thank you, Jose. That, that sounds really great. 
And um, I, I think that, you know, that that's really interesting. You know, a lot of what you're talking about just kind of, and like you said before that, you know, the people that told you that you're good at talking are right, you know, because just hearing your conversation, your descriptions of what it is that you do, I could really see the pictures of, of your adventure. And so one of the things that I wanted to ask you is that if you can share kind of, you know, some of the technical stuff that goes behind um, mm-hmm. making a podcast run, uh, because I know that sometimes, you know, a lot of people, we, they talk to Carl and I, and it's like, you know, how we're busy with this podcast. And I'm like, busy? You guys just talk <laughs> on the podcast for 45 minutes. How busy could you be? And, you know, and I think that's kind of the, the, the understanding is that, you know, not each, not every podcast is the same, that some podcasters just do it as a hobby. Yeah. So that that might be the area where they really are just talking to for 30 to 45 minutes or whatever. But I mean, if you can uh, talk about some of the dynamics that go behind podcasting and also too, if you can share kind of, you know, some of your uh, successes, some of the moments that really, you know, made you happy with your podcast mm-hmm. and maybe some of the the, low, the difficult parts of, of your podcast experience. Yeah. So I'll, I'll defend you guys. You guys are working you know very hard for what the podcast is and what you guys do and make it as as professional sounding as it lo- as it sounds right now honestly what you guys are doing is incredible because i can tell you i've heard not so great podcasts and i've heard some mediocre podcasts but you know honestly you guys are working your tails off and from what i've heard you guys are doing absolutely everything under the sun to make it great and great sounding. So kudos to you guys, first off. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank yes. you for that. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I spend a good probably six to eight hours working either on the audio, just audio. That's it. That is what I'm talking about. Recording and then editing the audio down. Um, editing out any noise that is um, interfering, editing, you know, an intro, uh, doing the introduction is separate from doing the regular um, actual conversation bit. If we have uh, advertisement, we have we do all of our own advertisements, uh, all the audio for it, all of the things that go along visually with it. So for those of you who don't know, um, when you go and do you know your podcast you also want to promote it and advertise for it so it's like all your instagram stuff that you guys post or anything like that that goes in and becomes basically a small business every little bit of time and effort that you put towards the podcast is counted for as something that you guys are um, working and you're working towards and so literally all of these little bits may seem like yes they're fun but they all take time and they all take effort and so i can tell you from the editing side i edit every one of our episodes and one episode uh, from front to back from start to finish it takes me about a whole day uh, to get it done and out the door and that is a saturday typically i'm usually doing friday saturday friday night into saturday morning and that gives us um, ample time to edit and then get everything set up to go out the doors or into the folders where they need to be saved. Another portion that you guys are also needing to consider down the road is what you guys are going to be doing as far as um, promoting it elsewhere. You know, if you guys do things like this, where I'm talking to you on another podcast, that takes time. That takes, you know, uh, out of my day to go, you know, talk to you guys. But it's like, it's important because those are the things that are going to give you new audience members. And so you got to really think about how you want to approach the podcasting uh, realm. If you just want to be the guy who just is in your studio, just talking, you know, either to yourself or to a, a co-host, you can definitely do that. There's plenty of podcasts to do that. But if you want a podcast that truly affects people, you're not just doing the audio you're doing audio editing you're doing visuals for the branding you're doing um all the extra amount of podcasting to help supplement all the other stuff and you guys heard that i do a patreon um that patreon what it means is every podcast that we do with someone we also do a bonus podcast where we answer 50 questions we do a little game with them and so it's like all of those little things are all part of developing your podcast and developing the brand that is your podcast. And so you guys are working significantly, but I know that you guys 
are on the precipice of doing more and working your butts off more into a full-time job. That's the other part. People don't know you guys are working full-time. So am I. I have um, other projects that have nothing to do with podcasting that are all different realms of design and other elements that I don't, it, it takes my brain a minute to click to another thing. So take, take that into consideration. You guys are working separate jobs that require brain power from other parts of your mind and then doing a very other oriented podcast that helps you either forget about your other work or helps you doubt like uh, stress relief or whatever it may be. You guys are putting in this amount of work and it's commendable because you guys are doing it out of the not kindness of your heart, but it's also something that you guys are fascinated and interested in. So I, that that's a long winded way of saying, you guys are working your butts off. I commend you guys on working your butts off. But again, being a podcaster is not just fun games all the time. There's amount of work that goes into it to make it sound as clear and as good and as concise as possible. Dene Mahapi Arts is a modern art made with traditional values. Dene is involving artists who is innovative through her artwork, while incorporating contemporary modern trends and bright colors being the base of her work. Hopi traditional elements is her main focus, giving her artwork an intricate finish. Though she's living in today's modern society, she paints meaning and value of traditional designs to showcase and symbolizes her upbringing out on Hopi. She specializes in customized painting, painted earrings to her colorful, bright canvas paintings and much more. Danae can be found on Instagram at D Mahapi Arts, where you can find and support her one of a kind art pieces. Uh, that that's a, a great thing, and you couldn't have said it any better, Jose. That that definitely is a lot of you know what what it is that that we do, and that's crazy to um, hear that all of the work that you put into your podcast. Because you know, I really wish Carl was as hardworking <laughs> as you are, because um, our <laughs> podcast journey is well documented on our YouTube channel. <laughs> And uh, from our YouTube episodes, you can we all know that J Man does all the work around here. <laughs> yeah, Carl, I'm so sorry for throwing you under the bus like that. <laughs> he, he likes to think that he runs the show, but in actuality, I actually am captain of this boat here. So yeah, you're the you're the face that makes all the clips happen. <laughs> I'm the guy who pushes the button, basically. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and well, you, honestly, you you two are fantastic when it comes to just going back and forth and getting lost in just a friendship because your conversations are like being best friends so i get lost in just what you guys talk about like when you're not focused on a subject when you guys just go off on a different tangent it gets me to the point I'm like i'm friends with you guys i'm you know i want to listen to you guys talk i want to listen to you guys make fun of each other so it's like <laughs> that's the whole point of the podcast is to get lost in the conversation and i i really think that that part of of our podcast uh, really should have been talked about at the beginning because that is something that we did talk about that we did want to make this podcast uh, at least for the listeners at home to really sound like that they were having this conversation being involved with the conversation um with yeah. uh, their own friends or their own relatives to make it as comfortable as possible because there are podcasts out there there, you know, even though that the information is really fascinating or really vital to a specific topic, that the way that it's presented kind of makes you feel like you're sitting in a, a college course uh, back in your uh, <laughs> ASU days. And that's something that we didn't yeah. want to do. And so, um, but we, we do, we do put a lot of effort into as, as much as I'd hate to do it, you know, give Carl a lot of credit because he is the, the technical side of this <laughs> dynamic duo here. Wait, wait, and, wait, 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 you're actually, you're actually praising me? This is the first. <laughs> You know, let's let's uh, let's let's do this. Uh, you yeah, know. get that, get those claps. <laughs> as much as it pains me, you know, I, I got to give credit to where it's due. And you know, in that first season, you know, we we really were kind of going off on the seat of our pants. But I think transitioning into season two, we did recognize that in order to grow the podcast, that we had to be in a lot of different spaces. You know, you mentioned our Instagram, our Twitter account, and then we do have our YouTube channel. And then you know, we did bring on somebody, somebody we haven't mentioned in a while. But big shout out to uh, Kelly. 
Kelly Tungovia, who's responsible for all of our graphic art that you see on all of our social media. And so it really does take a lot of effort, takes a lot of um, brainstorming and, you know, just a lot of thought into a lot of the things that it is that we do for the podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So thank you, Kelly. Yeah. And I also... for my podcast, I didn't even mention this portion of it. I actually do when people come on our show, it's kind of based on what they do for a living. And so I have to go out and do my own research on not only the owner, but the business as well. I do a little bit of um, like online research of like who they are, how long the business has been open and all of the little, little details that most people you know, they have it in front of them as like a, a, a card on late night shows like, oh, this person does this and they, you know, blah, blah, blah. They've been to this person and so on and so forth. It's just to help you know a little bit more and, you know, get to a different point in the conversation of like, oh, yeah, that's right. You went here for two years or you went and it just helps you uh, be professional and not, you know, get caught up on one idea or one topic. So there's a for certain podcasts, you might have research that goes along with doing what you do. That is very true. And so, you know, a lot of our topics do relate to um, native topics and, and Hopi topics. So, you know, mm-hmm. I'm there with all of my old books that I kept from my American Indian Studies uh, program. And then Carl, you know, he kind of just yeah. sh- shows up and, and says, you know, <laughs> what he's thinking at the just moment. Looks pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I just make the show look pretty cool, so... With my be- <laughs> with my beautiful singing voice, <laughs> and then and then when he has nothing else to say, when in doubt, throw Courtney under the bus. <laughs> throw Courtney out. Yep. I'm so sorry, Courtney. She could. She, for someone who's not a part of this podcast, she gets a lot of airtime. <laughs> 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 yeah, all of my other uh, other relatives uh, think so too. So they're probably out uh, rooting for Courtney to uh, you know murder me someday. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I think we're getting to about time. So, um, Jose, if you can let our audience know where to find you and where to find uh, finding Ar- the Finding Arizona podcast. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, this is the beautiful voice of Jose just beating out Carl right now. And I just want you to know, you can hear every episode of finding Arizona podcast at our website, finding Arizona podcast.com. We make it easy for you guys to connect with us. All of our social media handles are finding Arizona podcast at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Last but not least, if you want to go and become a super fan, there's a place to go do so. It's called Patreon, patreon.com slash finding Arizona podcast. There you'll sign up for one of the tiers. It helps us support us get out a little bit more into the world and also helps get the podcast generated some extra business. Uh, So you can sign up for one of the tiers, but you'll get something in return. That is bonus content available. Again, patreon.com slash finding Arizona podcast. And if you don't know where to find podcasts, let me just say you can go to your Apple podcast app. You can go to your Google play app. You can go to Spotify. You can go to other third parties like uh, YouTube and other places. You can just find search Finding Arizona Podcast. I promise you, you will find us. Thank you again for listening. And thank you to Carl and J-Man for having me on the podcast. Thank you, Jose. Right. And we might yeah. have to hire you to do our uh, sign-off phrase when we <laughs> sign out of the podcast. You did such a great job. Yeah, thank you. Thank I, you, Jose. So, but, uh, just, I just, appreciate it. Definitely. Just like the Finding Arizona podcast, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and you can hear our episodes on YouTube. And, you know, just a reminder to the folks out there, if you'd like to uh, give us uh, any type of financial support, you can do that at Anchor. Uh, dot fm forward slash cj podcast 85 and i think that's it yeah i think that's it well thank you again thank you jose for being our guest uh yeah exactly uh my name is carl this is my best friend j man thank you again for listening to carl and j man save the world podcast so long